Hey guys, Mixed Stuff. Today we're going to do a teardown of this wireless digital doorbell by Dio, model number DDB42W, which requires no batteries. It says here, no batteries required. And well, why do we do this? You know how sometimes we just want to activate or trigger something remotely, uh, like uh, turn the TV on or turn the lights on or draw the curtains, right? And we don't really have the means to do it, but today I'm going to show you how to incorporate this element of convenience into your daily living by using and mani manipulating these pair of devices. And why have I chosen this? Uh, these pair of devices, it's because it's wireless and batteryless. So um, it comes without the hassle of having to replace batteries every once in a while. This is a kinetic switch which harnesses the energy from the press of your finger to run the circuitry inside it uh, and send a radio signal to the receiving unit which is itself always plugged into the mains so it never runs out of battery, never runs out of energy. So it can last uh, practically virtually for a lifetime as long as it doesn't break, right? No need to replace batteries, no need to service it. So that's why I've chosen this uh, pair of devices by Dio, model number DDB42W. Um, from the hardware store it comes at uh, uh, 28 dollars, 28 bucks for for this item. So I'm gonna go ahead to do the teardown. Okay, before we take it apart, let's just test that it's working. So it sounds normally. So it's working. And I'm just gonna go ahead to take it apart. So first, uh, locate this screw. One single screw which holds everything together. It comes apart easily. And I'm gonna go ahead to detach the pair of wires which is linking it to the speakers because we're not going to need it for now and there is another screw which retains the circuit board I'm going to release it and so this this is the circuit board in close up and we're going to have to access the underside of it over here to uh, hook something onto it to manipulate the circuit to do what we need to do. Okay, so just a word of caution here if you're not comfortable working with mains voltages, don't try this yourself. Uh, and in any case, uh, for any project involving the mains, uh, you're not supposed to run it. You know, with everything exposed and not enclosed. But uh, for today, I'm not going to be able to show you anything much if, uh, uh, if we enclose everything. Uh, so I'm just going to run this exposed for now. But I'm going to be careful, okay? So I'm going to turn it on now and test it again to make sure it's still working. Oops. So as you can see, with the click of the kinetic switch, the blue LED still fires up. So now what we're going to do is to try to tap into um, that part of the circuit board which fires up the LED because we can use it as a trigger to uh, do something else, right? So check it out again, whenever I click on the kinetic switch, the LED lights up. So I'm going to use that signal, that very signal which lights up the LED to relay it to 
something else. It could be an Arduino, it could be some other circuit which does what I want to do. Alright, but before we do that, we have to um, ensure that the voltages are compatible. Let's say um, we want to feed this into a low voltage DC circuit, that of an Arduino, right? So it has to be operating somewhere between 3.3 volts or 5 volts, right? Uh, and not um, something ridiculous like 20 volts, 30 volts, or even uh, AC mains voltage. So we just have to test and make sure that voltages are compatible. So the first thing I'm going to do is to use a test pen to probe uh, the A node and K node of the LED. And as I do that, I've got to be very careful uh, not to short uh, any two terminals. I'm going to probe one terminal at a time, be very precise and you know not um, go all around with the conducting metal tip over the circuit board. So, um just going to probe the A note and it lights up, right? I'm not sure if you can see it. The test pen lights up when I probe the A note of the LED. I'm going to go ahead to probe the K note and it lights up as well. And um, the, the resistor to which it's uh, attached, all right, it lights up as well. So, um, the thing is, we can't be using the, the these, these two points, right? Because they are somehow live uh, and it's just going to fry up our Arduino circuit. So we have to find another way. So now let's have a close up view of what's happening on the circuit board. I'm just going to switch the mains off. And now let's see and close up what's happening. So because I have done this beforehand, I've probed the various parts of the circuit board for voltages, I found that actually most of the circuit is at a dangerous voltage of around negative 110 volts. Right. So almost the entire circuit is dangerous to touch. And it has to be enclosed at all times. Um, but that begs the question, how is it that uh, dangerously high voltages can be used to light up the LED? Well, I found that actually there's a ground reference point uh, with respect to a DC circuit, right? There's a ground reference point in this circuit, which is here. This point here is a ground reference point. So uh, if you treat it as a DC circuit, that can be said to be zero volts. But the entire circuit is actually hovering at a dangerous voltage of negative 110 volts. So relative to all other points in the circuit, this whole circuit board behaves like a DC circuit. But the entire board is actually uh, uh, offset against the mains neutral pin at a dangerous voltage, right? So that's what's happening. And I found that this point here, this is the A node of the LED. There is an LED here, you can see. This point here is the A node of the LED. This point here is the cathode and it's coupled to a resistor here. These two points are the points, are the terminals of the resistor, two kilo ohms resistor. They are all floating at a dangerous voltage of around negative 110 volts. But with respect to the ground reference point, they are all at um, 4.34 volts, right? When nothing's happening, when when the circuit's at rest. But when you click on the switch, what happens is the this point here, right? The 
this terminal of the resistor, it dips down to zero volts to be equivalent to this point here. So it creates a potential difference right, these, across these two points, the A node of the LED and the opposite terminal of the resistor. These two points will be at a potential difference of around 4.34 volts when the switch is pressed so as to light up the LED. So that means we can actually tap into these two points right, to trigger something but we can't feed it directly right so anyway this dips down to zero it's 4.34 dips down to zero so um, it's a signal that's usually high and then dips down to zero but even so right we can't feed it directly into a digital input of uh, an arduino circuit for example right we can't do that directly because it's going to fry up your your arduino circuit right remember that the entire board here is at a dangerously high voltage of negative 110 volts so we can't do that what we can do is to take these two points right these two points i'm just going to show you a, a close up in in the form of a circuit diagram it's like that right we're looking at these two points this is the blue led this is the two kilo ohms resistor you have to take these two points and feed it find a way to feed it into another circuit not directly because it's going to fry up your the other circuit but indirectly through a relay an isolating relay uh, or an optocoupler so how it works is I take these two points feed it to an optocoupler the optocoupler would activate uh, an LED which uh, triggers uh, a MOSFET transistor and turns it into a conducting state. So in that way, I can couple this circuit of the doorbell with another low voltage circuit, which is floating at another potential. So this, this doorbell circuit is floating at around negative 110 volts with respect to the neutral pin of our AC mains. And you can have an Arduino circuit, which doesn't float, which is at safe to touch uh, potentials, right? And you couple them through an optocoupler. Exactly how to do that? Well, that's for another video, but uh, suffices to say that we have found the two points. These are the two points which we can feed into another circuit. So thank you for watching and I'll probably do another video to show you the completed product. How, how, how I actually make use of these two points in the doorbell circuit to do something. Right, thank you.